All right, how's it going, guys? Just got done with our stream, and I wanted to show you guys what has happened and explain this conglomeration of stuff up here. But to give you a little bit of backstory of what we're doing, by the way, ignore the fact that, you know, I am Steve. I have no idea why, but, you know, I'm Steve. I even checked that I'm online. I just haven't shut down the instance yet to fix it. So my hand looks a little stupid. But if you guys remember, we get methane out of the distillation tower here. We get very small amounts of it, like four liters at a time. And we had it going into this tank, which I may be able to now get rid of this tank uh, because we should not be storing it anymore. But as of right now, we still have the tank. And we have this miniature nether portal underneath. While we're here, we had an accident. I think we had a spider come along when I was in the factory and jumped the fence and broke one of these. And I just happened to be out here and notice and caught it before it took out the whole field. I'm not real worried about fixing it at the moment because we have 111,000 and I'm thinking about changing it over to where it does fruit juice as well. That way this thing can run more often. Anyways, so we needed to get rid of that methane. And that's where I came up with this contraption that I made. Now we also have, we have a potato. We also have methane coming in down here from our cracking but we get very little of it here as well we get nine liters which by the way i turned this off already um we've got like three thousand uh plastic up there which is more than enough for the moment so i went ahead and turned it off so what we have down here is a miniature nether portal bringing in our gas, our methane. And we currently have 32 buckets left, just over 32 buckets left. And because of the way that Greg does drums and the fact that liquids can only ever come out the bottom, but gases can come out all sides, even if they're heavier than air, apparently, it shuts off the auto output whenever you, or the input whenever you put it on auto output. So I had to make a pump to pump it out of the drum. That way we could input from the miniature nether portal. So that's why there's a pump right here that is pumping into the side of our gas turbine. And you can input the gas into any of the front three by three. So we have this one coming in on the side. Then we have a fluidometer here that is set to equal zero. So we have no signal right now coming out of this because it is 32 buckets and let me climb up here on this side so i can attempt to show this to you i will leave a link to the stream if you want to go and see what we were doing and how i built this um and also a link to how to do the and gate which is what this is here um, I've done an AND gate a few times. This one is just a little simplified compared to the one I show in the video because that one uses three blocks. 
Same with the ones that we have downstairs that we used here. This is simplified down to where it just uses one. Uh, but basically that redstone wire comes over here and it connects to this controller. This controller is going to this valve, which is this pipe here. This pipe is our propane. And you can see we must have gone uh, below the threshold. So now this is running again. So now we should be down a little bit on gas, which we are. We're at 25. Um, but that valve is not open because that valve right there is set to only come on if it gets a redstone signal into the controller. And this is default settings for the controller and the valve. Okay. And then we have a AND gate here. So if I... Um, take out this block for just a second. You'll see we have a redstone torch on this one and a redstone torch on that one. And what that is doing is it's putting a redstone signal into this block. So this cable always has a redstone signal as long as this cable is turned off or that cable is turned off or if both of them are turned off, there's a redstone signal going into this block. Only if this one is on and this one is on, will it turn off both of the torches and then turn on this cable, which by it doing that will then turn this torch on, which will open this valve. Now, since there's gas in the system it's not a problem i can pop this out and you can see that that then opens this up and that is our natural gas so basically what this system is doing is we will burn our methane first and foremost once it is out it'll turn on the propane once the propane is empty and we do not have any methane waiting to be burnt, then the natural gas will turn on and we will burn up the natural gas that we have until one of those two things turns back on. At any point that we get methane or propane, then this will turn on. So if we go up here and we run outside real quick, I chose to not use a drum inside for the propane because we have a tank that's reasonably close. As the tank is this one right here, that is our propane. And if we look underneath here, right there is the fluid filter also set to equal zero. So that is reading that one. And that will keep that one going if we don't have methane. So that is how we are controlling our gas turbine now so we can burn off all of the gases that we have being made except for propane or except for butane. Butane is only used for making plastic. And I really should set up a thing for this that if it gets full on butane, it'll automatically turn that system back on and burn it off. Um, but I'm not expecting that we're going to need to do that. So at least at this 
point, it's not done. Um, a couple other things I wanted to go over. Um, the high, the sulfur dioxide system over there for turning hematite into iron has been working so much I had to change this over to a mass storage. Um, this thing has been working great for making our titanium. It's been running about non-stop because we have 434 more rutile to go through up there. Um, and I ended up having to change this over for our titanium because our titanium got over 5,000, which is nice. I still have some mess to clean up in here, but it looks like everything is doing good with it at the moment. Those sky stones, we ended up getting 292 from the space rocks we had that I threw in. I still have all of this stuff that needs to get put away that are little bits of nothing. Um, but that takes care of all of that. I did make a mistake, and we're going to have to revisit this at some point. Um, I hooked this up so that the water and chlorine could make hydrochloric acid. And so this is no longer uh, running. And we have filled up on sulfuric acid again. Uh, you can see the sulfuric acid tank is completely full. The hydrochloric bottom tank is completely full. And the top one is really close to it. So we need to re look at this at some point and make a system somewhat like what we made over there to where this one will turn on if we're low on sulfuric acid. I don't think I did this um, quite correctly, but I'm going to go ahead and shut this one back off and allow this to um, allow it to run out the hydrochloric acid. The reason I'm saying that is we can't run any more of this because we're full on sulfuric acid. We have the sulfur dioxide, but the sulfuric acid is full. As long as we're making it with sulfuric acid, it's not a problem. But right now it's just kind of stuck. I'll probably have to pull a little a tank worth out of the system. That way it'll start running it over here again. And uh, then we can go back to doing it the normal way but like i said i've got tons of iron i'm not really worried about it we've only got a thousand hematite left here and the sulfur dioxide that'll be building up back here isn't that bad because we have 1196 in dynamite dust and we have plenty of dynamite currently so I'm not real worried about the um, <clears throat> sulfur dioxide building up at the moment. We are running a little bit of the um, nitrogen di dioxide, nitrogen monoxide setting every now and then because we are going through our uh, rest of this stuff because we finally got enough mercury in the system to run through um, all of these. So they're running through the Aquariga stuff. But you can see that we are full on nitrogen monoxide at the moment, so it's not doing anything. Um, it should settle itself out at some point. If not, we'll have to take a look and figure out why. And then this is still running potassium bisulfite, which is a butt ton of it from when we were using that from the um, making hydrochloric acid and stuff. And the next thing we're going to be working on 
is burning off the ethanol that we're also making in that system back there. And if you go back and watch the live stream, we discussed the two different options that we have for that. And I think the option we're going to go for is just burning it in a engine and into a dynamo and turning it into power. Uh, so that's what we're going to be setting up in the next live stream. Hopefully, if everything goes right, which will be it'll be on Friday morning, um, depending on how I feel on Friday. Otherwise, it'll be Monday or Tuesday of next week. So if you have any questions about how we did this, uh, let me know. Go back and check out the live stream for how I set it up. Um, we are going to be starting on um, uranium processing soon. So I do need to go do a mining and music so I can get some uh, uraninite uh, mined up from down in our thing. I also want to go and get some more of the uh, platinum vein done because there's still a lot of that down there. I'm actually going to go when I get done with the video and go check on the lava because we don't have any lava up here. So that means that the pump should be done down there. And I want to try to get a bunch of that pumped out before we go doing that mining. So hope y'all enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Later. Uh-huh.